Well, it started in uh, 2001 when I joined some of the uh, guys in Brazil that were interested in bringing open office at that time for Brazilian Portuguese. Then I got involved with the community in Brazil and I started to help them to um, uh, translate the software for Portu uh, Brazilian Portuguese. Uh, then, uh, since then, I got uh, slowly involved in much and, uh, more and more into the open office community. Uh, we also developed the uh, community in Brazil. We even uh, founded a NGO uh, in Brazil to uh, give us a legal shelter for the Brazilian community. Uh, we also had an issue with the names of Open Office uh, back to 2007 because uh, the name was trademarked in Brazil. We had to change the name of the community and the NGO and we called it uh, BR Office. Back in 2010 with this, the appearance of uh, LibreOffice, it was a natural move to uh, bring BR Office inside LibreOffice. And then we, um, uh, we, after that, we abandoned the BR Office brand and we, st we stay with the LibreOffice brand. And my participation in this, uh, in this uh, uh, activity was not only by being one of the members, founding members of the uh, Document Foundation. So basically, uh, we, we continue the work of translating and keeping the software updated to the latest releases. So the activity in Brazil is, is quite intense uh, in the last decade. So today I am coordinating the uh, documentation uh, for LibreOffice. Uh, it's an interesting job because I think that uh, in my personal view it's uh, not a product that uh, the Document Foundation should be considering as, uh, as a, a collateral to the software. And also uh, what is important is that documentation is also a way, an, easy, an easier way for non-skilled developers to participate in the project. So at the moment we are uh, making the, um, uh, a way to make easy for non-developers to really contribute into our documentation. We built uh, the question and answer um, uh, forum, which is the AskBot. We also uh, uh, created a documentation specific uh, website. Uh, with, uh, the two are linked in now with the software, so if for the user it's now very easy to get to the documentation. And we have plans to uh, make it uh, easier and more uh, uh, dynamic, the help content that we have in the software. So modernization of the software, of the help content, creation of a specific uh, website for uh, easy access to the documentation and also an uh, active and dynamic question and answer uh, forum for the user. So the idea is to bring LibreOffice more close to the user and let the user more comfortable in using the software. So far what we have detected which is interesting is that there is strong, a strong demand on uh, a documentation on Calc and Writer. These are the two models that are very well used and people seem to lack the, the, the availability of an updated uh, guide for these two softwares. So this, this will open us uh, a very interesting perspective in the next uh, six to months to 12 months to address this demand that is already uh, there. Yeah, it's a good point because uh, one of the things that in the last uh, six months we had is people approaching uh, the documentation team and say, I want to help. Uh, how, do, how, do, how can I start helping uh, the, the, the documentation? So when they decided that they want to build a new page on the, on the help, my, it's so hard for them to jump into XML and write things and test and build and compile and such and such that I decided to give to the, to the newcomers the idea of please 
write a page in a document like Writer uh, with this with this content that has to be this this and these topics that you will fill with your experience on a specific feature that you're writing about. So people wrote about the the subject and then sent to me and then I take the contents and I transform it to a, 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 um, a help page. It takes a lot of time. It takes for me, we, I am skilled in the, in the issue, but it takes for me about five to six hours to really uh, finish a, a help page by hooking into the code. So this is not acceptable. I mean, it has to be more easy. The idea is to, uh, since we have this very old technology that was built for 10 years ago, uh, it's time now to modernize it. So let's, let's look again to the contents of this XML and let's try to make it more uh, easy for the user. So uh, why an XML is not, mo not needed anymore because basically what you use is to display contents. It's not to, ch to it, you don't use the, the feature of XML to exchange information, it's, it's just display. So if it's just display, let's go for HTML. And then if you come if if it's possible to go to html then you have a, an enormous amount of tools that helps you to edit X, uh, html in an easy way you have uh, uh, online editors you have uh, offline editors it's much more easy what you see is what you get so let's start to build uh, an environment to make it easy for the user to uh, or to the volunteer to jump in the, the help system and correct, update, or even create new pages in the help system. And this, this is a, a project I would like to carry in 2017 in order to uh, get the uh, users and the newcomers in an in a easier way to contribute. Because you see, uh, one of the interesting approach is that uh, people that wanted to write are young professional writers uh, and they said I am uh, I, I graduated into a professional documentation uh, and then I would like to exercise uh, can you help me so uh, this is a good uh, way to get uh, people that has more than uh, uh, quite an amount of skills and want to exercise with us so it's a good opportunity for them to create their own resume by contributing into all projects. Yeah, the language barrier is definitely one of the most, the greatest issues that we have to uh, have uh, these people uh, contributing to TDF. I can tell you because I am almost kind of uh, official translator for uh, even the community and uh, people really are scared to communicate in English and this, this, this is a real issue. Um, the point is uh, uh, it's not that easy. Uh, we really need to have some uh, key uh, 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 f persons in, in the country that can really be uh, sort of leaders on, uh, on the local community uh, but it's it's a it's a it's a it's a important approach to not let the leader be a kind of a small emperor and to uh, to shape the community on his own wishes which is not good so it's very very important to op let leave always open the, the, the communication between the Document Foundation and the individual, it's important. Not to have uh, people in the middle, to, unless it's for just for translation. It is important to develop a, a local uh, uh, open source events to get these people to gather. Uh, it's important also to find a project and get people involved in the project, say for, for example translation. Uh, we in Brazil, we have a weekly meeting hangout, through hangout with seven to eight people and we talk about issues on translation and documentation. So that keeps the, the I mean at least the team very uh, close together. Uh, we have a face-to-face, -face. we know we can look at, at the face which is also very important for um, um, 
building uh, synergy. And uh, uh, we keep this uh, meeting regularly, even if the amount of subjects is, is small. Uh, because uh, people, we discover that really people like to communicate. They really like to communicate and, and they also are very proud to be part of a team. So if we, if we can build a team that has an interesting mission and it's, uh, it's good for their own, um, um, uh, their own uh, developments, then you have a winning uh, team for open source.